This is Russell Smith in Los Angeles, here with wind-up number seven, a gorilla. Um, actually, wind-up isn't quite the right word, but he was uh, number seven in the series of wind-ups, and I've decided to leave that tag on him. Um, after number six, I was struggling with what to build and what to do, and the word struggle struck me, and I decided I'd try a kind of a Sisyphus piece or a Prometheus piece. Uh, the notion that our earthly condition is one of struggling, uh, the spirit struggling against the bondage of the flesh, and uh, sort of what the, the Buddhists call it, dukkha, you know, per all pervasive sense of uh, unsatisfactoriness, or that things would be better if they were different. You know, AA members call it the dis ease of life, the restless, irritable discontent. You know, Christians probably call it original sin. But whatever, the spirit battling with the flesh. And so the p title of the piece was going to be The Bondage of Flesh. The notion was to mount a wind-up motor on a stand, as I have before, and then have uh, this articulated gorilla reaching down into the cage and pulling on his ball and chain. In order to position him for the action, it was necessary to articulate all the joints and to put full mobility into the joints. So I proceeded to build every joint with at least two forms of motion. So there you see there's a ball, a rotator on the, on the shoulder, and there's also a hinge in the foot right there in the for to, to do another positioning. This is true and all the, the elbow is a little bit simpler. Uh, the wrist has that same level of complication. There's more articulation back here on the spine, the pelvis. So I spent uh, actually, you know, a number of weeks uh, building up this, uh, this figure that would move. And it was necessary to have him articulated uh, in many ways in order to in order that he would I could position him the way I wanted to for his uh, final struggle um, so I finally got him so I could I could position him however I wanted the hands were designed so they would fit under the cage bars so he would be perched on top of the cage reaching down into the cage lifting the ball then the uh, there would be levers that would from the motor that would lift him up and down. So he would lift and fall, lift and fall, lift and fall. Like uh, Sisyphus pushing the rock up the cliff, he would be forever lifting his ball and having the ball drop. Now, once he was positioned, I, I you could use set screws, which are these little thumb screws here, to lock down the joints. So the notion was that you end up creating all this movement and then end up locking down about 90% of it because you only need a few movements in order for the piece to work. So that seemed kind of a shame to create all that movement only to lock it down, but that, you know that's just the way it was and I was fixated, absolutely fixated on the, the idea that he be animated. Well, in a, for over a period of about two weeks I fought with this and I'd get him so he worked, and then one of the one of the set screws would slip, and I'd tighten that up and lock tight it, and then another of the set screws would loose, and uh, would would get loose, and then uh, it was as though the only way I can describe it is as though he was fighting, fighting the bondage, fighting, fighting going into the cage. He didn't like it at all, and. I went into a really f pretty s serious funk over this because I'd spent a lot of time on it. I'd built this cage and built the, you know, made the chain and gone through all this work only to, you know, strike this failure. Um, then one day in, in a flash it occurred to me that maybe I didn't have to have him bound at all and that maybe the bondage of the, this bondage of flesh that I was assuming was actually uh, just an idea I was clinging to. I was clinging to the idea of him being in this animated series and that perhaps uh, it wasn't necessary for him to be uh, animated at all. Now when that happened, the piece went from the bondage of flesh to the bondage of self. In other words, the bondage is, is an idea 
something that I can cling to this idea that that's the way life is if I want or maybe I can let it go and in the consequences in the consequence of that I ended up letting him free so he be, went from being a figure bound and locked in this motion to being uh, what I'm going, I'm going to call a sculptural pet so now he's free to move around. You can reposition him. You can hang him off the cage. You can take your hang, hang him from the chandelier. You can have him greet people at the door. He, he moves around freely. Um, a magazine entitled The Anvil's Ring, a blacksmithing magazine, picked up on this and did a nice little, little article on him. And uh, so I sometimes will take him out to the garage with me and have him just sit there. Uh, a reminder to me that the limitations in my art um, are largely self-imposed and when I get stuck I sit back and just try to let go of whatever preconceptions I have and uh, let the new ideas come in. So there he is. Sorry that this was uh, so much uh, yakety yak and, and so little little show but there he is. Oh one, one note about the cage um, you notice there's no there's no uh, lock on the cage door and the, the meaning of that is that this bondage is an inside job and our the cage is open all you have to do is is push on the push on the door so thanks for your patience I'm now gonna go on to something that really runs <laughs>